Hello there, my name is Ismas, and today we're going to be looking at uh, how to simulate crowds in Blender 2.8 R2. Uh, uh, so, and uh, we're going to be looking at how to make this medieval battle. Uh, we have this uh, army here, small army, going against this massive uh, battalion of medieval soldiers. So, yeah, these guys are going to need your prayers, so you can start praying for them right now. But, uh, yeah, let's see how to set up this. Uh, you can see they also can move uh, up different slopes and uh, if i went into edit mode and i decided to change uh, this terrain a bit let me turn on proportional editing you can see they will still be able to navigate over those hills even the new ones i've just added yeah so let's see how to set this up and uh, yeah so open up a new blend file and uh, maybe find a character or download a character preferably uh, one with uh, some bit of animation, a looping animation like this. Uh, you can download something from Mixamo, uh, which is a site uh, where you can get characters uh, that are already animated uh, and uh, with textures and everything. So uh, that's where I got mine. Uh, so you can download that, import it in Blender using FBX import, and I uh, should have everything set up. So after you're done with that, what you want to do is add something like a plane, and then parent the mesh, uh, this mesh here, I've gone, I've gone on and uh, joined all the separate objects uh, that, uh, so for example, the sword was separate from the uh, from the armor and uh, this shield was also separate from the main object, from the main body. So I went in and uh, joined them into a single object so that is easier for me to uh, work with. Uh, but uh, yeah, after you do that, uh, you want to parent uh, this mesh to the uh, plane, control P. Uh, make sure you also use the option keep offset so that you don't uh, mess, mess up uh, the scale of the of the character so ctrl p and use object keep transform and uh, now if you move uh, the mesh uh, the the character should also move but uh, because uh, the character is being deformed by this amateur you will start seeing you see that deformation issue so if you want to move this plane anywhere what you want to do is uh, add an empty like that and then parent uh, this plane uh, to this empty, control P, and make sure you use keep transform, and then parent the armature to that uh, empty as well. And then instead of moving this or moving the armature, just move uh, the uh, the empty like that. So if you if say you want to unmade this forward, uh, then you unmade that. Uh, another thing you will have to do is uh, if you have a looping animation, make sure the character is not moving uh, anyways, they, they're just still in one place. So if you want to move them forward, you just move uh, the parent object forward as to kind of create that illusion of movement. Uh, so now to duplicate these characters or have more than one, uh, there are two ways to do to do this. You can use a particle system or uh, use uh, instancing uh, by vertices or faces. So let's first try out the first one. So if you have a mesh, uh, you can see we have a mesh with four vertices and uh, go to the object properties of that mesh. Under instancing, you can choose to instance uh, whatever is parented to this to this mesh. Uh, duplicate, you can duplicate it uh, on every position of uh, the vertex, on every vertex you have for the mesh. So you can see that uh, we have four vertices here, uh, which you can see under here, under this property here. Uh, so we have four duplicates of these objects on each of the vertices are for this mesh. So they also get all the animation and all the data we have. So if we go to material mode, you can see this is what we get. And uh, you can also turn off render instance uh, so that we can only see uh, this mesh. And uh, if we give this some bit of animation, uh, the parent, the main parent, so I'll just add a keyframe here and a keyframe may be at to push this forward like that you can see we make it seem like how the characters are actually moving uh, look, also let me change this to vector uh, interpolation so that we don't have that sliding so yeah you can see how we can easily make duplicates of this character and uh, if you want you can also let, let me first unhide my empty uh, which should be under if you go because I've uh, hidden it from the instancing uh, 
to find it, I would have to go under this parent, this empty. So it's here. Let me have it back. So if I want to make more vertices, more duplicates here, I'll just go in here and duplicate, and sorry, add more vertices using uh, edge loops or just extruding different faces or vertices. So I can even ah, see now we have our army. But uh, there are too much information and uh, because this is a, a battle, you'd expect things to be a bit more chaotic. So instead of them being in this grid pattern, I can just start moving our vertices around. And because each of the instances is parented to, it's like it's, it's spawning at uh, a vertex and also being parented to that vertex. Uh, when I move the vertices around, you can see I'm also moving those characters on those vertices around. So now we can create some chaos around the mesh to have something like that. But uh, in the original version of mine, you can see that uh, the characters are able to traverse uh, terrain. They can go over terrain, uh, you can see here. Uh, so to do that, uh, that's very simple actually. What you need to do is uh, add uh, the terrain. So I'm just going to, let me first remove that keyframe. I'm going to sculpt this really quick, quickly, uh, sculpt the terrain a bit. Let me first scale it up. Let me go back to sculpt mode. And uh, I'll turn on dipo, dynamic type topo, uh, so that I can easily add uh, faces where I want them. So, okay, let me turn off this mirror. I'm just creating something simple here, nothing fancy. So this is our terrain. Uh, let's go back to layout. Maybe you can see now they're just going through the terrain. So to make them go over uh, the terrain, what you can do is uh, select uh, that mesh and go under to the under the modifiers and add uh, a shrink crab modifier. So shrink crab, shrink crab. So here and then select this as the target, and uh, now they should be able to go over those hills very easily. Sometimes if the hills are very hard, uh, kind of very abrupt, uh, if they are very tall like this, you may experience some snapping like that. So if you experience that kind of jagged snapping, what you want to do is select uh, this uh, mesh and go under the shrink wrap modifier. And uh, instead of using uh, nearest point as the mod, change it to project. And that should smooth, smoothen are uh, the transition or the diff the movement. Uh, so uh, as I said, there are different ways to set up the duplicating. So the first one we saw was using those, inst using uh, duplicating, instancing using vertices. All faces it still does the same, but I prefer using vertices because you have control over where the characters are going to be placed. Another way was suggested to me uh, by uh, Albert, but but Bennett, I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. So I have already uploaded uh, the time lapse of making this process, and uh, he he suggested maybe using a particle system, and I think that is actually more efficient uh, than using the instancing uh, we have ju I've just shown you. So let me show you how you can use this. So I'm just going to duplicate. I should let me just duplicate this. can see it has the shrink modifier so that's why I'm using it uh, maybe let me also start this animation from far here and uh, let me just slow this down yeah so now instead of using duplicates how we're going to use uh, the hair particle system the hair system so if I add a hair system like this you can also see that uh, it will also follow the same uh, thing but uh, now, where is my main character, my original character? It's this, it's this guy here. So if I duplicate this guy, uh, but uh, I need to clear parent uh, because it's still parented to this object. Uh, that's why you see the duplicates also being uh, duplicated as well. So if I select him and then clear parent, control P, but make sure you clear and, tr and keep transform. 
so after you have the character set up like this, uh, then you can go to the particle system and instead of using these hair particles, you can just go under render and switch to object and select uh, the character as your object. And, uh, then you just have to increase uh, the scale. And uh, the, good, the great thing about this is that uh, now you also have all these other settings for particle system that you can use uh, for your character. Uh, you can increase the count. Uh, right now the count is a bit too high, so I'm just going to use 100. And they're facing the wrong direction, uh, even with their rotation. So what I'm going to do, let me just go to here. Just select, let me also give this a less brighter materials. So if you want them to face the right direction, you just select the uh, the particles and then go under, make sure you have advanced turned on and then go under uh, rotation, check that and uh, play around with the object rotation until you find uh, the right rotation. So they're still facing the wrong rotation. So I can select now the character. Let's see if that would work. So let's try global Z, global Y. Sometimes you really have to experiment a bit uh, to get uh, the right orientation for these for these particles. So let's try object Y, object Z. Now can also just if that is being a lot of trouble you can just turn on object rotation and uh, then rotate this uh, the object uh, let me first turn on this turn off this screen recording uh, sorry turn off keyframe recording and then rotate the in the object itself until you get the right orientation you want so let me see what would that be so if i rotate this on the x on the Z, on the Y. Yeah, so rotate Y 90 degrees and uh, you can see now they're facing the right direction. And now you can see they're also being scat uh, randomized in their position. So we don't have to worry about uh, moving the vertices around. And uh, if I also go to edit mode, I can scale this up uh, to increase their spacing or how spread uh, they are. I can also come in now and uh, play around with uh, the randomness of the scale so that you have some shorter uh, soldiers and uh, taller soldiers. Uh, this option was, this you couldn't do with the instancing using vertices. Uh, then again, any, uh, any setting here for the particles can work uh, for you now. And uh, let's see what else can we do. Yeah, so and uh, another thing you can do with these uh, particles is that uh, instead of using an object, uh, you can just use, you can also use uh, a collection. So if you have two characters, uh, where is my other character? Let me just import that file import fbx. Now import fbx. Now, if you have more than one character, so for example, this, now I have this other character. I can give these, I can have a, co a collection of characters. So uh, let me first set up the, the running animation for this character. So I'll just go into dope sheet, give him a running animation as well. I want to make sure that I give him uh, the stationary running where he's not going anywhere, something like that. I'm also going to first optimize this character, maybe also join everything into a single mesh uh, so that it's easy for me to work with. Uh, decimate the character so that I don't, so that I optimize the animation. 
And as, remember, since the camera is going to be far, fr fr far away from the characters, I can get away with using less low polygon character characters. So we have uh, the work cycle. We just have to duplicate it to loop it a few times. So I'll just go under the nonlinear nonlinear animation and uh, turn these into bars and duplicate them a few times. Maybe I'll do a tutorial on how to use uh, the nonlinear uh, editor. And see now I'm making that run cycle dup uh, loop forever. So now I can turn this into a collection. So select all these characters. Uh, make sure you don't select the amateurs, otherwise they'll also be duplicated in your amateur. So, so select this mesh and then this and move them into a new collection. I'll call this uh, X's for characters. And now in the particle system, I can switch from object at collection and select uh, the collection I want. So X's. Do we see the other character? Let me see. Make sure this is in that. Okay, so let me make sure that I'm moving. Also, let me join uh, these legs uh, to the main character. X's. Okay, so he wasn't moved uh, to that. Uh, and uh, uh, we are still having an issue with the orientation. Again, I'll just rotate him. Uh, make sure you're also selecting the amateur, rotating on the Y axis. Uh, the axis of rotation will depend on how your character is oriented. So now you can see we have more than one character in our uh, population. Yeah, it's being, it's being a bit uh, laggy right now because I'm recording and uh, my computer is not the best computer to handle this. And uh, yeah, uh, the characters are not well, well optimized here. So, but uh, you can see how you can get more characters. And uh, uh, this one is standing out a lot, so you can see that uh, it's being repeated a lot, and uh, it doesn't fit the uh, the scene as well too well. So, but uh, I guess you get the point of how you can do this. And uh, yeah, this is what I ended up making. Have multiple characters. Now imagine if you have more than one, and I randomize them around. So, yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Uh, a like subscribe uh, share with anyone who might find this useful again thank you